Welcome back, it's Teacher Reacts, and I just want to say thank you. I uh, dropped a video, 500 subs. Uh, I know that's not a huge deal in the YouTube world, but it is a huge deal to me. I appreciate everybody that's taking the time to listen, everybody that's given me positive feedback, and even those that have given me some real good constructive criticism. I appreciate it. Uh, we're looking to move forward. Got a new intro. Uh, my son's coming back from North Carolina. We dropped the Joyner Lucas uh, video that everybody wanted, and now here comes the response. That was highly, highly sought after. I'm very excited to get into this. Uh, if you have not joined the family, hey, if you like this video, smash the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, like, comment, and just be part of the family. We're going to get right into this. Joining, I hear you going through some things and it's getting tough, but... I see you got my word with you, it's a shame how the pain only thing make you pick it up uh. And you complain when it rains just once But I never hear thanks for that hundred days with the sun Could've ran to me first, ran to the drink first And now I gotta have this conversation with you when you drunk Alright, so right out of the bat um, He makes a statement that Lucas is coming when he is in need And generally speaking, I'm gonna just be honest I don't care where you are in terms of your belief system But when things go wrong, as they sometimes will, and the road you're trudging seems all uphill, yeah, that's the poem, don't quit. But why do people come to God? Why? There are humongous questions that are left without answers. Now, are there answers? Yeah, there's answers, but where do they come from? Man, you could say, oh, well, the Word of God was inspired. Well, if it was, okay, it still came from man. God used man. Or you could say it's based on science because man developed research that came into play in terms of trying to identify how this earth was built or how this was constructed, how we got here, etc. There's all kinds of theories. There's evolution, Big Bang, yada, yada. But at the end of the day, everybody's had questions at some point about what is this, what, what is it that we're doing? Where are we? What are we doing? What is beyond this life? Are we just here for a moment, then gone, and that's it? That's the whole purpose? There's so many questions that have to be answered. And why are his questions any different than anyone else's? He's broken. He, he's trying to find answers. See, before I even start addressing it, I don't owe you any answers, so don't get used to it. But I feel like you be... Why doesn't God owe us any answers? And I know I'm probably going to get pounded in the comment section for this, but let's just be real. Why does he not have to provide answers? We are like little kids when it comes to that, right? When you have a little kid and they start to develop and grow, what do they do? They say, Mommy, Daddy, what is this? What is that? Why is this? What is that? Why is it? And they fall on their face and they do this and they make mistakes and yada, yada, yada. But they always have questions. We are children of God. We're going to have questions. So who's supposed to have the answer? For children of God, then God's supposed to have the answer, right? So that's why we question it. But the truth is, you can't handle the truth, Lucas. But you kept it a buck, and I love that. If I kept it a buck back, could you take what you stepping in? I know it's other folk to feel like you. So first thing I'm going to do is let you know who you questioning. I am the God who created the earth. I knew you start feeling yourself, so I made you from dirt. Ain't no battery in your body, so who making it work? I made the earth perfect. It's y'all making it work. Who put the seed in the fruit? Put the fruit in the tree, and that tree in another little seed but me. Then turn around and made you the same way after. After that, but you was in your daddy sack and his dad daddy sack. Uh, I am the one that put breath in your lungs and created the same mind that you question me from. Yeah. You were lost, I'm the way, I'm the pot of you the clay, and now the clay got something to say. Okay. Okay, I get that. Um, you know, in my experience, in order for people to be somebody that can honestly be shaped and molded into something that's usable, you have to be able to be on the potter's wheel. You have to be clay that's not formed or rough around the edges or however you want to look at it. And then you're placed on the potter's wheel and you are shaped and molded into something that is usable. I've also heard the term very much said that, you know, there there is a time when you are unusable by God and that you can get thrown, you know, metaphor, whatever, thrown into the fire, melted down, all the impurities rise to the top, and you come out the other side, and that it's, you're in, uh, 
a form that can be reshaped into something that's usable okay so the bottom line is that you know what we have to come broken and we have to you know be able to to question and find out what it is that we're supposed to be doing if we're going to be in god's will you can never check me so check this your standard for right and wrong is me i am the checklist i am right wrong is whatever you're left with i am life you without me is with death is. that's a bar I am the judge, you answer me If I throw lightning, who throws it back at me? Nobody. And if all this falls, who can stand but me? You go to the cross for you cross-examine me yeah. You say I made mistakes, you mistaken me You made gods out of men who were clay to me You put lives over lives that you ain't create Then fill away cause all flesh the same to me uh. What if some of the people you naming to me Wasn't really everything that you made them to be? Or worse, what if they are and I take them with me? Are you telling me it's any better place they could be? Well, that was deep right there, okay? Wasn't really everything you made them to be or worse. What if they are and I take them with me? You telling me there's any place that better they could be? I heard this a million times. When someone is suffering and they end up passing away, what does everybody say? Well, they're in a better place. Well, what is that place? Where do they go? What is better? It's the only answer that I can come to the conclusion is, okay, you either go in the ground and you're six feet under, and then everybody can agree with that because you've seen it. It's verifiable. Uh, or you are taken uh, to heaven because you're saved when Jesus, uh, I don't want to get into all that, but at the end of the day, you go to heaven if you are, if you've accepted Christ as your savior, and that's got to be a better place. So he's saying, well, if they were you know, if they weren't who you thought they were going to be, and I take them with me, where would where would a better place be? So why are you complaining about it? But he's got, you know, you got to understand, Bizzle, that we are selfish people. We are selfish individuals who develop a bond with people and develop a love for people. And when they're gone, they don't come back. It's it's hard to grasp. It's hard to to grieve. It's hard to like move on and not you know not remember that person and remember how much. You know influence they had in your life so I, I understand both sides but I understand Lucas's struggle Either way, you don't know, you just gotta push through Cause why you over here saying what I should do Somebody lost somebody last week and came at me the same way Saying I should've took you uh, You asked why the good die young But the truth is none of y'all are good, not one not The one. only one ever been good is my son So to answer your question, the good died once Jesus. What if I told you to choose when your mom died? Mom died. You think you could choose when your mom died? Yeah, that's tough because no man knows the hour, no man knows the day. I mean, we could go over a hundred million different examples of, you know, when people die. Do you think they wake up in the morning and go, you know what, today's the day I'm going to die. Now, are there people that are in that situation? Yes, there's always people in that situation. But the majority of people don't wake up and go, you know what, today's the day I'm going to pass away. So I know my mom's going to pass away today or I know my dad's going to pass away today and I'm just going to have to make a range. They don't think like that. Now, are there sickly responses? Are there situations where you you see somebody, you know, kind of fading out and they're going to move into I get that. But you can't put a time on God. You can't tell God when he's going to take somebody. How many times have you almost experienced death and didn't? And what did you do? The first thing you said, oh, thank God. Okay? God's in control. Remember that. I care what you believe. He's in control. If you put it off 20 years away, 20 years later when that day came, would you not cry? You couldn't be God, you were not I, my ways are not yours, your thoughts are not mine You can't even deal with the pressure of your own life when you're not high, try looking in the God mind See I love them more than you ever did, more than you ever could, death doesn't lessen it Let my own son meet death as the evidence, and I love them all, rap star to the president Alright, so I, I know it's this is a hard one to comprehend, but he says, I love them more than you ever did, more than you ever could. Death doesn't lessen it. And you know what? That I can't argue with that at all. God has, you know, the agape love or the unconditional love, one that is very much something that we are trying to achieve as human beings, but we don't have the power to love unconditionally unless we learn it and, and love the way God loved us.
That's the only way we're ever going to get there. And I don't, I don't see us getting there. We have too much hum, you know, human tendencies to love somebody unconditionally. Now, not saying it's impossible, but in my world, I don't know. It's, it's difficult. There's always something that we find in terms of fault with people. You know, we are sinners. We're always going to be people who mess up. We make mistakes. We're always going to be in that category no matter what because nobody's perfect. God can love somebody regardless of their choices. And just because he takes them to wherever he takes them doesn't mean that he loves them any less. Let my own son meet death as the evidence And I love him all, rap star to the president The real question is, what you living like? If I punish every sin, would you live tonight? So how you get mad when I get a mother folks Same chances I give you to get it right You got a son that one day will be a man You expect him to trust you and he don't understand Or even know what you up to Cause he knows that you love him, right? So trust that I love you Very, very good. Very, very good. You know, bottom line is, obviously, Jordan Lucas's faith got shook. And you know what? My faith has been shook. I know lots of people whose faith has been shook. But you know what? When it shook, who do we turn to? Who do we turn to? We either turn to the world or we turn to God for answers. What one provides the best answer? What is going to happen to us? What is going to happen to you? You know, every one of us have fallen short. Every one of us mess up every day. And if he punished us every single time we did something, we'd be like that little dog that got kicked too much. Every time you go to pet it, it's like, whoa, 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 don't pet me. I, I, don't, I think you're going to hit me. That's not how he wants us to live. He knows that there's consequences that come naturally from our choices. And when we mess up, those things sometimes will happen to us. And sometimes... The choices we make lead to things that can cause our life to be taken away. Sometimes not intentionally and sometimes intentionally. Joyner Lucas is representing you know, people who are in a tough place. We don't know where his faith is at. We have no room to judge him. We have no room to question what he's doing. God can only judge him. That's the end of the day. What we need to be doing is loving him and providing answers with him face to face. And Bizzle, I appreciate what you do. And I'm saying, you know, 100, you did a great job. But the, the Bible says you should go to the person and talk to them about it if you got an issue. So, you know, reach out to the man and say, hey, I just I am questioning about some of the things you did. Uh, do you have questions? Because I'm, I'm a, a child of God and I think that I can provide answers to you or point you in the right direction. Um, you know, there's two sides to the coin, but at the end of the day, it's rap, okay? Bizzle not uh, veering from the course that he's defending what he stands for, and I respect that. And Jordan Lucas put out something that said, you know what, I have a lot of questions. Uh, you know, there's things in my life that are empty, and, and I'm looking for answers. And I you know, can't argue with that. But, you know, two thumbs up to the response, two thumbs up to uh, those that requested it. You know, I really appreciate it. Um, we're going to get back into the NF tracks, and I've also got some special requests. Uh, compiled a list of... People who are looking for reactions to songs, and I'm going to try my best to get to every single one of them. Uh, continue in the comment section, but please be patient as these do take time, and I'll be back with more content. And we're out. Yeah! <laughs>